Okay, so this is a really nice topic. We're going to be talking about the nature of stationary points. And remember firstly what a stationary point is. That is just when the derivative of a function is zero. So when the gradient of the tangent is zero. So it's literally like the point, um, it's the point where the function like visibly turns. So here we've got a turning point, here we've got a turning point, and here we've got a turning point because the derivative is zero at these points. And then by the nature of these turning points, I mean we could either have a maximum, a minimum, or a point of inflection. And we also have some conditions for these. So these are the three cases we're going to be looking at. And in all of these cases, we need them to be turning points. So firstly, we need the derivative to be zero. But if we want a maximum, we need the second derivative to be negative. And if we want a minimum, we want the second derivative to be positive. But for a point of inflection, it's kind of the other case where the second derivative is uh, zero, but we also need this extra condition where the third derivative is non-zero. So let's just look at this graph. I've got all three cases on here. So this is a maximum, or sometimes it's called a local maximum because it's not really the highest point of the whole graph, but locally it's a maximum. So this is a maximum point. Down here, we've got a local minimum. And up here, I've got a point of inflection. And this is kind of uh, the in-between of a maximum and minimum. So it's a turning point, but next to the point, it goes both below and above the turning point. So it's not a maximum or a minimum. So this one, it's getting a bit messy now, but this is uh, an inflection point. So this is quite abstract, but we're gonna look at some examples and hopefully this will make a bit more sense. So if I uh, look at the function f of x equals two x cubed minus 15x squared plus 24x plus six. So we want to find uh, the stationary points and also the nature of the stationary points. So first off, and it's always gonna be the same strategy, we differentiate this and we find when um, the derivative equals zero. So that just tells us the stationary points. So let's do that. So f dashed of x, if we differentiate this, bring the power to the front and reduce the power by one. That's just standard uh, differentiation. And this gives us six x squared minus 30x plus 24. And as we were saying, if we want to find the stationary points, we need to set this equation equal to zero and then solve this quadratic equation. So notice that all these terms are a multiple of six, so I can just divide through by six. And this gives us x squared minus five x plus four equals zero. This is something we can actually factorize. So you might be able to spot it. It factorizes as x minus one times x uh, minus four. You can just check that by expanding these brackets out. And now this tells us the stationary points. It tells us when the derivative is zero which is when x equals one and x equals four. Okay, so now we know the stationary points. We don't know what type of stationary points they are. And to find this out, we're gonna use our conditions up here. So for all of them, we need to find the second derivative of this function. So that's the first step. I'm just gonna write it over here. We need to calculate f double dash of x. And to do that, just differentiate this expression and we get 12 times x minus 30, minus 30, because the constant disappears. So this is a second derivative of f, uh, and then we just need to evaluate this function at these points and see if it's positive, negative, or equal to zero. So let's start off with one. f double dash of one, if we just put it in, 12 times one, which is 12, minus 30, this is minus 18. And this is negative. This tells us that x equals one is actually a maximum point. So this thing here is a local maximum. And we can do the same for the second one. So f double dash of four. If we put that in, we have 12 times four, which is 48 minus 30. And this comes out to be 18. And the value doesn't matter. All that matters is the sign. This is actually positive. So this tells us that this point is a local minimum. So it's a really nice method to kind of find out the nature of these turning points without even having to graph the function. So this actually already tells us a lot of information about this function. So I've got one more example to show you, so I'm just gonna wipe this off and then we'll have a look at it. Okay, so this time we're gonna be looking at a slightly simpler example, actually. It's just gonna be f of x equals x cubed. So we want to find the turning points and the nature of these turning points. And remember, the method's always the same. To start off, we just find the derivative of f. So we calculate f dashed of x. This is just quite simple, we just bring the power down 
and reduce the power by one. This gives us three x squared. So this is the derivative of f. And to find its turning points, we need to set this equation equal to zero. So we just set this equation equal to zero. And then you can see that the only solution is going to be when x equals zero. So this is the turning point, the only turning point, in fact. And now we want to find the nature of this turning point. So remember our method, we now find the second derivative of f. So I'll just go over here, f double dashed of x. We just differentiate this expression, bring down the power. This gives us 6x. That's just the second derivative. So we now evaluate this point at the second derivative, f double dashed of 0. And we see this is actually 0. So at the moment, we can't really tell if it's um, a maximum, a minimum, or a point of inflection. What we have to do is we have to uh, find the third order information. We actually have to find th uh, the third derivative. And then if this is non-zero, then we know that it's a point of inflection. So let me just go down here now, f triple dashed of x. Again, we just differentiate this expression and we get six, which is a constant. So if we put in zero or any point, then we're just gonna get six. And now this is important because this is non-zero. So we've satisfied all the conditions for this point to be an inflection point. So this tells us this is an inflection point inflection and I'm not sure if I've spelled that correctly <laughs> and this is actually quite a famous function so you might be familiar with it I can just do a quick sketch it actually looks something like this so this is exactly where the inflection point happens when x equals zero and we see it's not a maximum it's not a minimum but this is a point where the derivative equals zero so remember the method is always the same um, we find the derivative set that equal to zero then find the turning points just by solving that equation. And then we, to find the nature of these um, turning points, we need to find the second order information and sometimes the third. Uh, but we calculate the second order derivative and then we input these values into that function. And then depending on the value, the sign in fact of that output, if it's negative, it's a maximum. If it's positive, it's a minimum. But if it's zero, uh, then we can't tell yet until we find the third order information. And then if this is non-zero, like in this example, then we can conclude it's an uh, inflection point.